Welcome to this training on how to build self-confidence. In it, we're gonna talk about what self-confidence is and then show you four ways that you can work on building self-confidence for yourself. So let's get started. Now, when we're discussing self-confidence, we need to start off with the simple question of what is self-confidence? Simply put, self-confidence is the general sense of trust and belief in your own abilities, your powers, and your judgments. As an athlete, self-confidence means you have trust in yourself and you have trust in your skills. This means you have trust in your skills so that you know your skills are what you need to have in order to succeed. But beyond that, you need to have trust in yourself that you are capable of achieving success in a game. There's a lot of athletes that know that they have the skills, but then they lack the trust in execution. When I'm working with athletes, a lot of times I say, do you have confidence in understanding or do you have confidence in execution? They have confidence in understanding knowing that, yes, I have talents. I have the physical skills to succeed. But they then lack confidence in execution because they say, I don't see myself perform well in games. There's that disconnect between having the understanding of the skills and then having the confidence that I will be able to go out and succeed in a game. Now, the reason that it's so important to build self-confidence and cultivate self-confidence is because of the many benefits that strong self-confidence are going to offer you as an athlete. One of them is less anxiety. As an athlete, anxiety is going to lead to you playing tight. It's going to lead to you second-guessing yourself, thinking too much about the future, taking you out of the present moment. And that's going to ultimately lead to lower levels of performance. It's going to improve your self-talk. Here in a second, you're going to learn that one of the ways to build self-confidence is through self-talk. So it's one of those things that that play into each other. But when you work on developing higher self-confidence, you're going to have better self-talk. Third is greater motivation. Greater motivation to go out and play, go out and to compete because you trust in yourself, right? If you don't have confidence, you're probably not going to have as much motivation. You're doubting yourself. So why would you then have the motivation to go compete, the motivation to go train if you don't really believe that you are going to be able to succeed? Then it's going to provide greater resilience and grit. This kind of plays into the motivation that we just talked about. When you have self-confidence, if you make a mistake or you have a bad game, let's say, you're going to have that much more grit and resilience to be able to pull yourself up, get the motivation, go train, figure out what happened, and show up the next game, show up the next practice or whenever, full of just determination to get better and determination to be the player that you know you're capable of being. When you don't have self-confidence, it's a lot easier to just feel like you're never going to be able to succeed and feel like just the whole world is crumbling down because you made a mistake or you had a bad game. So self-confidence is going to provide you with more resilience and more grit. And then also it's better relationships. And I really find this one interesting because in college, I regrettably didn't have a good relationship with my coach. At least that's the way that I felt because I didn't put myself out there to talk to him. I didn't put myself out there to build that relationship because I was insecure and I lacked confidence. When you have strong self-confidence, it's much easier for you to go talk to your coaches, talk to your teammates, and develop stronger relationships with them. And the stronger those relationships are, the better success you're going to have as an athlete, and also just the more fulfillment and the more fun you're going to have when you're playing your game. And then lastly is the willingness to try new things. I think this one pertains to athletes when it comes to going out and trying out for a new team, going to a showcase, maybe even trying a new position because you have confidence in yourself that you are going to be able to figure it out and also confidence in your skills that you're good enough. You belong at that trial. You belong at that showcase. You belong on this new team because you have confidence in yourself. So let's get right into it. The four ways to improve your self-confidence. Number one is going to be to use confident body language. Number two is to improve your self-talk. Number three, practice self-acceptance. And number four, set small goals. Now, we're going to go into each one of these with a lot more detail here in a second. So step number one is to use confident body language. As an athlete, you have to be careful of the way that you're holding your body. This can be really reflected after you make a mistake. So after you make a mistake, it's really easy to hang your head and get down on yourself. But you have to be sure that you hold your body in a way that you want to feel. Your body language is one of the quickest ways you can either feel less confident or feel more confident. If you have your shoulders hunched over and you're looking at the ground, it's a lot easier in that moment to feel down on yourself and to continue to think about the mistake that you just made. But if you force yourself to have confident body language, stand up tall, have your chest out, keep your head held high. It is a lot harder to have those feelings of regret and self-pity, and it's a lot easier in that moment to feel more confident. So one of the quickest ways that you can work on boosting your self-confidence, especially in the moment, immediately, is by focusing on your body language. Step number two is that you want to improve your self-talk. 
Earlier I said that self-talk is one of the benefits of self-confidence, but it's also one of the ways that you can work on improving your self-confidence. This is because there's a direct correlation between what you think and how you feel. If you were able to slow down all the many thoughts that you have during a game whenever you're feeling like you lack confidence, I guarantee you're going to be speaking to yourself in a negative way. There's no way that you are subconsciously and consciously speaking to yourself very positively if at the same time you're continually feeling like you're lacking confidence. Now, on the flip side of that, when you start to speak to yourself more confidently, this doesn't mean that those other thoughts are going to go away, but you are slowly building up more positive self-talk and you're slowly working to build your self-confidence. So if you want to build your self-confidence, one of the best ways that you can do this is by focusing on how you speak to yourself. And there's a couple different ways I always like to recommend athletes go about doing this. One is taking a long-term approach in terms of using some affirmations on a daily basis to reprogram your subconscious. But also in the moment, thinking of just a few different statements you can say, they can be as simple as, I am confident, I am confident, I am confident, that you're going to use during a game. And you're especially going to use after a mistake or whenever you're doubting yourself. And taking those two approaches, that's really going to help you over the long term, alter that internal dialogue that you have and really work to increase your self-confidence. And then also in the short term, be able to take a little bit more control of your thoughts, which are then going to lead to taking control of your confidence. Step number three or way number three is that you're going to practice self-acceptance. Now, self-acceptance is an interesting one because as athletes, we're always wanting to improve, right? You're always thinking, I want to have better stats. I want to get on this better team. I want to reach this higher level. So it's hard to say, I just want to be content and accept myself. But you have to remember, when you try to build self-confidence before accepting who you are, you're building it from a place of discontent, which means you're never truly going to build as strong a self-confidence as you can. When you practice self-acceptance, this is really allowing you to see where your flaws are, see where the challenges are within your game, and that can then be improved, and that's going to boost your self-confidence. Then also in the moment, by accepting this is who I am, this is the player I am, your confidence is going to improve just pretty rapidly in that moment. This is because a lot of times self-confidence, when we're lacking self-confidence, it's because we don't see ourselves as good enough right now. As an athlete, you probably think, I'm not as good as I want to be, so then you doubt yourself and you doubt your skills because you're constantly seeing, I want to get to this level and my skills don't match that right now. So then you, you doubt yourself right now. If you begin practicing more self-acceptance and saying, I'm really proud of the skills I have. This is the player I am. Yes, I understand that I am going to become this player that I want to become. But right now, I am who I am. That's going to improve your self-confidence in the moment. But on top of that, if you take that approach, you're going to be able to more objectively look at the areas you need to improve upon and actually have a greater chance of reaching the, the level that you want and to become the athlete that you want rather than starting from a place of discontent where you don't accept who you already are. And then lastly, step or way number four is that you're going to set small goals for yourself. The purpose of these in building confidence is to really prove to yourself that you can accomplish what you set out to do. You want the goals to be challenging and worth your time, but don't make them so difficult that you're unlikely to do them. And setting goals, small goals and small targets and challenges for yourself, it's one of the best ways to build your self-confidence. I encourage you to think about this in terms of a month, right? Say, This is what I I want to accomplish this month. And then break that down and say, okay, I'm going to accomplish this this week, this next week, this the following week. And then say, all right, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do tomorrow? When you break these goals down, you are providing yourself the opportunity to succeed. And confidence is built on experience, the experience of seeing yourself succeed. The more you can set small challenges for yourself, set small goals, accomplish them, and then feel successful afterwards, the greater your self-confidence is going to grow. So I encourage you to put these four steps into practice because self-confidence is one of the most important traits for any athlete to have. I hope you enjoyed this training. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new trainings each week on sports psychology and mental training to help you build a championship mindset. Now, when we're talking about self-confidence, it is one of the basic principles and mental characteristics all athletes need. I've already said that multiple times within this training. But once we get beyond that, there is a certain mindset that you need in order to perform your best on a consistent basis. Now, I've created created a free training. I have it linked in the description below, and it will take you through the exercise I use with my one-on-one coaching clients that's going to help you uncover 
your personalized and specific championship mindset statement. So then you can say, this is what it means for me to compete with a championship mindset. Then you'll be able to repeat it on a consistent basis because that consistency is what is truly key to your long-term success. So go ahead and click on that link and take that free training for yourself. Thank you for watching and I wish you the best of success in all that you do.